Mr. Capone. What's happening, homeboy? Welcome to Vlad TV. It's a pleasure, homeboy. Hell yeah, yeah, man. That's right. You know, I've seen some of your other interviews where you talk about with all the work you put in, some of the bigger outlets really don't don't bring you on board and showcase you. Yeah. So. I mean, look, we, we, we from the streets. Nowadays, people say they're from the streets, but, it's, you know, streets is streets. We're really from the streets. So when we started coming up, we didn't get no record label deals. We didn't go meetings in Hollywood with top executives. We didn't know none of those motherfuckers. You know, we were straight on the streets. We're coming out the hood, dropping shit for the hood. Kind of like the NWA situation. We did that with no Jerry Heller. We didn't have that connect. So we just sold millions of records, but independently, and you know, it is what it is. And we never got that yeah. major connect, but we still got the streets feeling us, you know? That's what it is. So when most people look at you, they assume that you're Mexican, but you actually aren't Mexican. Yeah, exactly. We got a book um, that's coming out, coming soon. It's a whole guy paid me because a lot of, lot of controversy about what I am. People say Armenian, people came up with like Arabian, Pakistani, um, Salvadorian, like it came out of all left field as soon as I popped. Obviously when you pop, you know, fools are gonna come out there and try to come with some shit. But at the end of the day, we got a book and that book's gonna be coming out. It's gonna tell you everything. So once that, sh it's supposed to be already out, but hopefully next year it comes out, breaks you the family, show you family pictures, me as a kid, my sisters, my brothers, not my brother, I don't even have a brother, but my sisters, my family, my mom, dad, blah, 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 cousins. So get to know more about me. So I have to keep that on the book coming out. So get that shit. Well, when I looked it up, everywhere where I saw it said Pakistani. Yeah, I mean, hey, that's, that's what they're- are you, are you gonna deny yeah. that or? No, you, look, <laughs> you listen to my music, you'll hear what I am. I, mean, okay. I, say, I say straight out. I say it in many lyrics, but I'm not here, I'm a, I'm a South Side, I'm a gangster. I represent my hood, I'm from a Mexican hood. Mm -hmm. So I got homies that are Salvadorians, I got yeah. homies that are South Americans, I got homies that are black. When they're repping their shit, they're repping their hood, they're representing their culture, their lifestyle. So when motherfuckers come at you and say, hey, you're Salvadorian or some shit like that, that's, that's irrelevant in the South Side. South Side, we got homies that are Armenians, everything. So me, at the end of the day, that's why I got that book coming up so everyone gets to see okay. and the stories. <laughs> I mean, people actually might get surprised. You might see something else that you don't know, but let them say what they say, you know, Pakistani, Arabian, Chinese, <laughs> whatever, <laughs> <Fair> Mongolian. <enough. laughs> So, so you grew up in San Gabriel Valley? San Gabriel Valley, SGV. What, what city though? City, La Puente, West Covina. I was raised in La Puente, West Covina. When you get, when we used to get our mail, we'd get Valinda, we'd get La Puente, we'd get West Covina. So okay. it, was in, it was right there, city of industry, all that area. It's mixed three cities, so your address would come three different directions. So my hood's technically in West Covina, so Basically, we would say that, but my address was technically La Puente, Valinda area. So, okay. I mean, that's our hood still right there, you know? So when you were growing up in West Covina, was the gang thing already established there and already had history there, or was it something that was kind of new? Well, no, a gang's been around in fucking the SGV for years. Like, we have gangs La Puente, fucking, there's Monte, there's hoods that have been around for like, technically for a long time. Our barrio was more of like a new hood, came out in the... 80s and shit, you know, I'm like almost one of the OGs to the hood. The main guys who started the hood, I'm like right under them, like basically I was right there, I was there put in work, man, at that time. So when the hoods came up, I was like the youngster and then the older guys were like, they were the first generation. And they started off by being ba bangers and they were getting recruited in different hoods and then eventually they said, you know what, we got our own shit. I had to go the extra mile. I wasn't in a hood that was around for 20 years, 50 years, and I just get to write off an old famous hood name. Now we had to be tested. So every hood around us was like, fuck these fools. And we would have to be like, fuck you too. Bam, and we had to go extra mile, put in work, just to show that we're that fucking crazy and we had to get our name. I mean, when you see certain people that, that are gang affiliated, yeah, you see a mix, but sometimes you see people that their family has been into it generationally. But in your situation, with a new hood, your parents were not into that. No, nah, no. Nah. So when you first started affiliating yourself, how did your parents take to that? Of course, like, basically, like, most, even parents that are from the hood, they're not going to like their kid being from the hood. Unless they're, you know, they got issues, like, doing drug issues. My, my, my parents were, like, basically fresh out, coming up. 
So they were just trying to make a living. So we were living in La Puente. My pops was working like four or five days. He would disappear, just 20 hour shifts, like crazy shifts. Like I wouldn't even see him. He'd be doing his thing just to, so we could have food on our plate. Uh, mom, same way, she, we would have a whole babysitting section. Like I'd, I'd be at the house, it'd be like 20, 30 kids, all little kids. 20, 30 kids? I mean, kids. yeah, the whole neighborhood would just leave the kids out of my mom's spot and she like, I'll take care of the kids. So she was like the babysitter. And that's how she ended up, you know, working in preschools and stuff, doing stuff like that. But she was, at the beginning, she was babysitting everyone's kids. So we grew up basically in the neighborhood, just babysitting kids, moms trying to do it. So they were a working class family. Me, obviously, I'm on the streets. I mean, you do what you do to survive and you get associated with people that, you know, it really started with motherfuckers coming into my neighborhood and fucking up one of my homies that live in my neighborhood, you know, and then I'm backing him up. Now we're involved, you know, now, now we're affiliated. Okay. Just like that. Like how old were you when you first joined up? Man, I was like 16, 17 when I was really put on the hood. Okay. But I mean, I was always in and out as a kid doing little sports, this and that, but I was always kicking with my boys until shit got dangerous, motherfuckers getting shot. Then it's like, you know, it's time to put on the boots and let's, let's go to war, you know? So, so at 16, 17, the, the OGs in this fairly new clique yeah. in your area, you joined, you joined up with them. Yeah, well, I mean, basically they were recruiting, putting fools in, all in the neighborhood. Uh, you know, we're young and dumb, so we don't even think about like they're recruiting or nothing. It's just family, like we're our hood. It's like a baseball team. This is our team right here. We represent, so we just, we just went with the punches and it just happened to be. Happened to be. You got jumped in? I mean, yeah, of course. I mean, <laughs> that's a, you gotta get jumped in, you know what I'm saying? Okay, and for how long? I mean, I can't really remember how long it was, but you know, homies came around, like what's cracking, I already know they're coming for that jumping. <laughs> so I, I take a swing, homies take a swing, boom, 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 boom. Next thing you're like, you with it, let's go, okay. in the hood. So it wasn't that bad? It wasn't that bad. Right. I mean, you know, so, I mean we have fools that get jumped in, like I literally, back in the days was with fools that, you know, like, it was just for a fun, like these guys hanging out with us, I wanna be in the hood. He's yelling at us, like, I wanna be in the hood. So, you know, the fools are getting jumped because they're suckers, you know what I'm saying? But me, it was like a different story, like, you know, they, it was more of a respect issue, but they still, at the end of the day, that's the mandatory rules, everybody got jumped, you know? So, now now you're part of this clique. Yeah. And you guys identify as Sereños. Yeah. Now, when you talk about Sereños, it's not really, uh, you know, it's not a centralized thing. I guess back in the day it used to be, right? I mean, yeah, basically if you're from Southern California, you know, you, you're a Southsider. Exactly. And then some people go get busted, they do more times, they get the more Sereño stamp. But at the end of the day, it's all Southern California. Um, it's branched off like that. Yeah, it's been out of state. I mean, I go to Utah, homies are saying we're, you know, boom, boom, boom. Okay. It's all Southern California based, basically. And then the line is where, like Bakersfield, um, roughly? Yeah, I would say, well, Bakersfield still, they're Southern California. Okay. Now, after you go past Bakersfield, you almost get in a 30, 40, 50% split where there's areas that are Southern, Southern style and there's areas that are straight Northern style, you know what I'm saying? So we have merged into Northern California. I got boys up there. I got people from Vallejo to um, Sacramento to like Central Valley. They're, they're representing s the South Side, you know what I'm saying? Okay, but, but they're located in the North. They're located in the North, yeah. So is it still as bad as it was where if you're a Norteño, Sereño, it's instantly a problem or is it really just I based mean, on individual relationships and, and so forth? I'm not gonna speak on that too much, but at the end of the day, I mean, it is what it is. You, you, you're walking down the street, you see somebody from that, it'll pop off like just, just off that tip, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, there's no like, it ain't, I can't say it's, I could say back then it was probably more crazier, has to be, because you know, obviously it ain't the same. Motherfuckers fell off, motherfuckers going to PC yards, fools are flopping out on both sides, every side, whatever. But uh, flopping means meaning like they just turn into dropouts or they they they're saying they're this and that and you know next you know they you know whatever you know they just okay. weren't doing the G shit you know.